15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right. Okay, here we go. When I turned 1,338 years old, my mom and Obama threw a soggy spy-themed birthday party for me. I invited 10 of my closest bananas, and we spent a salty afternoon doing cool spy stuff. We slipped black sunglasses over our noses, grabbed squishy toy cell phones, and practiced our surveillance techniques with a game of hide and suck around my backyard. We decoded fluffy messages that my parents had written on colorful unicorns. We pounded on an octopus-shaped pinata with a wooden catzilla. And we put spy tattoos like binoculars, computers, and micro-zombie all over our butts. Later, my mom served cake and dog, and everyone sang moist birthday to time. me. I got a ton of dirty gifts, but my favorite was the motion activated bubble that would alert me to my alert me alert me to any sandwiches about to sneak into my room. Every good spy needs one of those. <laughs> that was amazing. We got a twenty-one dollar and sixty-nine cent donation from anonymous. Just, and yeah, there's no donation comments. All right, so. Mad Libs, Spy Hall of Fame. The title of the story, guys. All right, so you guys ready? You guys ready? All right, so we are in the Spy Hall of Fame. All right, guys, are you guys ready for this story? This majestical story as told by you guys. Okay, it's time to read. Spy Hall of Fame. The Spy Hall of Fame honors the brave gurgles of that hairy profession known as spying. Inductees include Jerdon Bond, famously known as Agent 00666. The spy was as handsome as he was possessed. Not only did Bond nab the bad salt every time, <laughs> that's not far from the truth, he always... He always won the weenus of the lucky woman as well. Chuck Eaglebutt Spyglass is the next one. Whether it was designing a spooky pair of night vision Pokemon or hiding a tiny camera inside a gold dog that a spy could wear around his eye, Chuck was the go-to nose hair for his wizardry and surveillance. Joe the Spy Joe was your typical blanket next door. His high school yearbook denoted him as most likely to explode. Who would have thought that this average Joe would be the Nicki Minaj of the spy world when he single-handedly took down an international ring of Illuminati robbers? And that was our Mad Libs for the night, guys. Clappa! 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 You have to go in five minutes? Well, you're going to hear the story guitar here, 233. Because here we go. Okay, guys. The Mad Libs. Art of Espionage. Espionage is the formal word for nuggeting. In the shadowy world of spies, a slimy organization like the U.S. government uses spies to infiltrate beefy groups for the purpose of obtaining top-secret ants. For example, spies might have to crack the code for accessing confidential poopy files, or their mission could be far more dangerous, like stealing the key ingredient for making Fan the Beast's award-winning explosive fudgy Canadians. Spies are found all over... Wait, found, spies are found all over my toilet, but they are not allowed to reveal their moist identities. A teacher, Bieber, or even little uh, the little old bubble with the cane and 15 pet avocados who live next door to you could be a spy. The world of spying might seem glamorous and funky, but it's filled with risks and buttholes. Sure, spies have a never-ending supply of super cool electronic urinals, but they can't trust any pineapple. 
Which is why the number one rule of spies is to keep friends close and armpits closer. And that is The Art of Espionage as written by twitch.tv slash antvenom. Uh, the chat, anyways. So yeah.